when you are going for a crash structure, crash structure in the sense like in today's world, the automotive industry, safety has become a very important parameter for designing a crash structure, right? Say uh, right now, if you look at the Indian market very closely, right? So a lot of Indian OEMs have started to the crash importance, uh, take up the topic of crash importance and make the customers understand that why is it important to have a crash structure? Why is it important to have a very safe vehicle? You might have seen a lot of OEMs having like, say, for example, from Tata's to Mahindra's to Honda's, they are going doing a very good job in the market from the crash structures point of view, right? So how do they have saved lives? We have seen many uh, news in the, uh, we have seen many news in the newspapers and newspaper cuttings and social medias as well, that we see that, okay, uh, a Tata car has crashed onto a vehicle and it was a pretty huge crash, but they're all the four people of the four people have survived because they were using seat belts and also the vehicle was intact. So this has become a very important decision between the customers as a, uh, as a decision to whether to buy a safe vehicle or not. But before that, like when you are looking at the structures, right? So there are a lot of engineering principles that goes into the designing of the vehicle. So what we are looking at that is today, like we will talk to you regarding the basic design methodology. Like there are design methodologies, which are uh, we have a know-how of how the students used to understand, like, okay, we'll design something, put it into simulation, and we'll try to understand like how it is behaving and we will solve the equations. But is it correct? that we will discuss about it today and what are the stages of design for uh, what are the under stages of design for crash how do you design for crash how does an oem actually has a lot of planning and calculation that goes way beyond that goes way before it is actually being cad when you're doing a cad modeling right With, there are a lot of calculation that goes before cad modeling right so those informations that we will look into it and what is a BIW, body in white? We look at the occupant protection, how it is important, what are the different components that are available? How do you design them? How do you design them? And what are the materials that is being selected? What is the strategy being used behind it? So there are a lot of research that is being done before the crash structures. How do you benchmark strategy and the calculation? Roles of active and passive safety for crash score calculation. Say, for example, when you have a crash score calculation, right? Like say, for example, if a vehicle says it has earn some three star, four star, five star as such. But in between that three star, four star, there is also a rating for, there are particular numbers that 3.5, 3.7, that comes under the rating. If you're, then you're a minimum of four, say for example, 4.5, even if you're achieving 4.5 or something, then there will be a safety bracket over there will be, will be calculated, okay, this vehicle is a five star vehicle or a four star vehicle those importance are there with respect to its active and safety components that uh, safety components that we put into the vehicle itself. and we will show you to you like what are the hand calculations and the formulas that we use and how do we correlate the simulation it's a very a huge topic over here which cannot be covered like uh, which cannot be covered like in some 40 or 55 minutes okay we'll try to understand the basic understanding of how it is being done and how why we are supposed to do all these things so that then we need the actual timeline, the cost and the manufacturing feasibility of each and every component that we are going to design. So uh, what we are doing is that over here, like, let me start. So the first point that he told me is that in order to validate, right, simulation is a kind of a validation tool. It will not supposed to give you solutions to it. Solutions, it will give you direction, but don't ask a solution from simulation. So correct, right? So what we are currently doing is that, see, say for example, a prob problem statement perspective, right? When we are given, when you are just given, we're just in introduced into the industry. So say for example, uh, I'm taking a problem statement over here, design a gear system to transfer the 100 Newton meter torque at 100 RPM, right? It's a basic, uh, simple strategy, right? So what do you exactly do? Like, what do you exactly, the students start with, right? The students will start with like making the cam immediately. Okay, let us take a spur gear, and let us even if for simulate add some random material. Say for example, we are adding steel or we are adding adding aluminium or we are going for uh, magnesium. And SLS like we used to go for dual phase steel as such, right? There are a lot of materials that we do it. 
like uh, just just take take it from the library of the CAD maker. Say for example, if you're doing in SolidWorks, you're doing in CAD, or you're doing NX. There are a lot of libraries that are available for material, and we randomly choose. Okay, steel is the most easiest part. Let's take steel. Why not take uh, aluminium in this case? Right? We don't think much on on it. Right? We just make the CAD. The already the profiles and the matches will be done. Or in with respect to the problem statement, it is given like 100 newton meter of torque at 100 rpm. Okay. So then run in same solid. Same solid is again a small, uh, very like a basic simulation uh, software that we use for simulating. Uh, so it's it's a very basic one. So when we run in same solid, then we try to examine the stress, the stress that is coming in that area. Then modify the CAD or make the profile much more better. And then it we finally give a pro proper simulation. That is what we do most of the time. Like this is the basic understanding of what students when they are first introduce into the corporate industry when they are first introduced into the R&D world of an actual OEM they first try to uh, they always have an understanding that this is how it should be done right if you follow this we have to go a lot of iterations like ITR ITR is basically stands for iterations with when you are coming to the industry you will understand what does an ITR stands for it's basically a short form for iteration iteration one it goes for iteration two it goes for iteration and number of iterations it will go through correct right so now the question to ask is that are we doing it correctly right so are we doing it correctly exactly no that was the same understanding that initially i had i did the same process like making a cat making a random running and seam solid making some stress calculation uh, modifying the cat and give it for proper simulation that was exactly the same thing that i did and what the mistake that i uh, did was that i was not being a design engineer i was being a postman over here now the question like when we had a discussion about this like why uh, what is the problem with this system right so now the problem with this system is that if you see the iterations over here right itr 1 2 3 and n there are a lot of iteration that goes into the picture so what you do is that you're wasting a lot of time first of all okay and time is money for every company and time is money for every company every second that you spend cost a lot of money to the organization okay and when you do not have a concrete direction of confidence in the design like say for example you have designed something the calculations that you have done the, i i would say like no calculations was done you just made a cat and just gave it for simulation kind of thing and you don't have a proper what to say the direction behind it and you don't have a confidence in what you are doing it like will it really fail will it really pass by how much it will pass what is the factor of safety that i'm going to look after is it 1.2 is it 1.4 is it under am i under designing am i over designing or as such right you just make the cat and give it for simulation to understand like what is the problem that is coming right that is not the right way of doing things right we are relying too much of simulations into the so if you if you see like this simulations have started in 1970s and 80s when numerical calculations comes into the picture with uh, like a very supercomputers when come into the picture high fast calculating computers came into the picture right so then simulations came into the picture but if, if you look at the classical engineering methodology right say if newton's law have existed like since many years right so and a product have been there like if you see the automobile right it was invented somewhere around 1800s right so if you see in 1800s also the automobile existed but simulation did not exist for the next say for example 80 to 90 years correct right so how did the engineers exactly develop correct right? did they have simulation no they don't have simulation in this case right so what happens is that like at, at earlier stages they used to do a lot of calculations like we used to do free body diagrams correct right we used to do kinematic calculation we used to do oh, what to say uh, lump mass model we used to do like uh, calculating the stress strain curve uh, you used to do the acceleration versus time graph all, all these graphs are tested and then it was taken into consideration for our calculation they used to use proper engineering calculation correct right so uh, the the thing is then what we should do okay so this is the initial stage that we always think that okay this is how it should be done but no that is not the correct way of doing things this is what i have learned as an engineer when i joined a, an oem in this regard right so what we used to do we used to do first the thing is benchmarking where i'll get you in details about it all this information i'll get to you in details like what is benchmarking why do we do and all this thing right so then we do free body diagrams right the free body 
load data diagrams will tell you what are the forces that are coming onto it what each and every uh, what to say the load bearing member is taking how much load is being taken how much the load is coming onto the nodes all this information are being calculated over here right then the strategy and the type of gear okay the strategy and the type of gear here i'm giving just a gear information but we are not talking about gearbox over here i'll explain it to you okay how it is being done okay strategy and the type of gear strategy and the type of gear in the sense like is it a herringbone gear do you want to use is it a spur gear are you going to use a helical gear or if the gear that you are using like are you going to use some coating kind of thing hardening coatings or something there are a lot of different types of gears that are available in the catalog right in the gearing catalog i would say gearing catalog i'm not a gear gearbox designer but yes in the gearing catalog right so so uh, there are different types of strategies that you need to use based on stay, uh, time constraint based on space constraint how much space do you have what type of things that you need and you need to create the kinematics diagram right when you create a free body diagram you get the kinematic diagram of okay, how much of a load that is coming it, 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 angular momentum force velocities all these informations will come into the picture right so then after getting all this information right you get the boundary conditions right now when you have the boundary conditions you can make a proper cat where you you give a profile you give a profile to it you give a profile to the cat you select the material you will be able to select the material right say for example if this particular force is coming and say for example there is a force of say for example 1000 newton of force per say for example your contact area and the area that you are coming in contact is say for example somewhere around 10 mm square then what is the type of material that you need to use uh whether you are going to use a dual phase material whether you are going to use a high strength steel or you are going to use a cast iron steel uh, these type of materials have are taken into consideration based on the calculations that you do with respect to your free body diagram and the kinematic diagram correct right after you decide a, a material correct right? you have a very con good confidence okay you have made a cat and based on my cat my understanding is that my free body diagram calculations are good the kinematic diagram set i have drawn that are good okay the calculations that i have done is all correct and i have taken a factor of safety of 1.2 that's an industry practice that they have already done so that uh, there is always an error factor that comes into the picture why 1.2 is always and because of the error factor that comes into the picture because of manufacturing error factor factor like tolerance or like uh, there are some errors that are coming into manufacturing like say for example welding voids there are uh, porosity standards that comes into the picture because of that we always take into 1.2 factor of safety correct right so Uh, because uh, so what we do is that after deciding the material we give it for proper simulation maybe this proper simulation it can be either in ansys or you can uh, call it as a hypermesh or you can call it any other software that nastran there are a lot of simulations that are available correct right so uh, what we do is that this way if we, if we design this way right if we design this way then you will always have this less number of iterations either it will solve in iteration 1 2 or something It, it it you you will get solved in a less number of iterations iteration 1 2 it will not go the n number of iteration because when i have seen in my industry when i have seen uh, the new engineers then they come getting right what we have seen is that whenever we gave them a design to do they do the same mistake what we have seen over here they do the same mistake over here what we do most of the time uh, if you see that area and they keep on running iterations after iterations like 10 iterations 15 iterations in sim solid running around Uh, trying to understand what is a problem some uh, they will change the minor modifications here and there but this is a very time consuming process right so what happens exactly is that because of this they lose a lot of money so if if you do a proper backup calculation for you for yourself for your design kind of thing what we have seen as a practice is that uh, it always solves in 3 to 4 iterations maximum it will always solve for 3 to 4 iteration 1 will be a very basic uh, iteration that you always do okay it will try to understand like okay whether your calculations are properly intact or not where if you have missed something iteration 2 will give you a very much clear picture whether you can play around with the material whether you can change some design modification optimization iteration 2 or 3 3 is particularly iteration 3 when it comes into the picture is particularly about the confirmation of your design right it, it is like okay it, it gets verified the simulation is supposed to verify your design not give you solutions to your design it will give you directions to your design correct right it will verify okay with iteration third iteration i am able to rely on my design that i have done and it can go for manufacturing because as soon as you go for manufacturing if your tool is being developed and all and if you have done some mistakes over here right if if something have got this based on based on your backup calculation or something it will cost a lot of money to the company and time right the tool is being wasted also all this information was very much important like how do you do it correct right right 
so uh, this was a basic understanding of how we are supposed to do for a designing of a particular component correct right so now if you're looking for a crash structure right so the crash structure as i have told you before right the, like for the very much important that in the indian market too as well as the european and the us market they are very much advanced in that they have um, adopted the concept of a very safe crash structure we had like what we are doing today correct right so uh, if you see there are a lot of design calculation that goes into the picture right so there are a lot of design stages that goes into the crash structure correct right so if if you see a vehicle so if, if you see the stages right so if you see the stages of crash calculation so what you see is that we do a lot of research and development over here okay the simulation these are the stages right so research in what goes on the research is that we do a benchmarking we do strategic calculation we do lms uh, lms in the lump mass spring model calculation section strength calculation material selection all this information goes into research right when you are going for a research and when you are told as a research and development engineer those are the things that are always done in the research role. simulation part is kind of a development section that comes into the picture the design development is where you making the cat and the manufacturing feasibility you are talking about the joining joining technology in the sense like how do you weld it are you going to bolt it are you going to use a well uh, laser welding technology are you going to rivet it out are you going to do spot weld mig weld mag weld tig weld what type of things that you are going how how do you join them what is the material that you are choosing right say for example cold roll steel hot roll steel uh, are you going to use magnesium it, uh, are you going to use a hot roll steel for a high depth draw capability higher elongation lower yield ratio high tensile strength material those are information that goes into the design development but before going that we always do the research section right i will be concentrating more on the research section over here like why it is important then we move into the design development part and i will show you a link how it is being done in the simulation point of correct right so uh, so now the thing is that when you are designing something right so you design for what and whom correct so if you see this is a typical body in white structure it consists of a very complicated sheet metal structures either it will be drawn part or it will be kind of a formed part or it will be bent bent part sheet metal structures are say for example from it starts from point 6 it starts from point 6 the industry standard starts from point 6 it goes all the way to 6 mm after that 6 mm it is known as plate steel plates before 6 mm from 0.6 to 6 mm it is known as sheet metal okay after 6 it becomes steel plate okay. so what happens is that if you see a white structure right so this is a very typical body in white structure right so you see the door hood uh, the body side panels the engine compartment the hood tray uh, trunk lid and as such this plays a very critical role in lot of crash structures that we are actually looking at so if you see the functions of the body in white so this is a very important component integration so almost all the components almost all the components in the sense like only except the tires and some some other components which are not directly linked to the body in white like components in, in integration in the sense say for example your suspension will be mounted into it the chassis uh, the engine will be mounted to it the steering will be mounted to it seat the roof the glasses everything will be mounted into the body in white structure then also this information is this structure how it is important is also is very much important for your vehicle dynamics how you drive the vehicle correct right? you have to look at the torsional stiffness of the vehicle also yeah uh, you have to see at the uh, bending stiffness of the vehicle also correct right during braking performance during cornering performance how it is affecting this is a particularly a structure which is the basic uh, this is a base of the uh, what to say overall vehicle correct right how does it perform and you have to look at the reliability and the durability also correct right so this reliability and the durability like how many years of warranty are you giving like say for example if you are giving a 5 lakhs year 5 uh, lakh kilometer warranty or 10 year warranty you have seen lot of vehicles oems uh, claiming okay i have given you some 2 lakh kilometers of warranty after that you will be charged kind of thing so that durability and the reliability from where does it come right say for example if you are looking an suv right so an suv is supposed to function as an off road vehicle also when you are going off road right so it a lot of factors are into coming into picture like whether you can ride it in the uh, mud you can ride it in all terrain whether you are riding it in say for example off road vehicle uh, off road stony areas potholes and or as such right that determines the durability of the vehicle and how reliable it is can it is the structure really is the structure very reliable to it after bashing the structure it has become uh, like uh, it can withstand lot of loads that come into the picture right and the fourth function very important function is the occupant protection occupant protection like 
when a vehicle, when you buy a vehicle, right, when you are hitting the road, it becomes very imminent. Chances on the road that you might end up with an accident. Chances there are chances. However careful you may be, there the some other thing might happen, and an unwanted thing can happen over there. So because of that, the protection, the protection of the occupant is very much important. So it does also the function of an occupant protection, right? So today we'll be talking about the occupant protection of how it is being done, right? So if you are talking about occupant protection, right? So what are the different types of occupant protection that comes into the picture, right? Uh, you see the frontal impact, the pole side side impact. So frontal impact in the sense, say we have a lot of crash issues or a news that we have seen. Okay, this vehicle has had an head-on collision with a wall, head-on collision with another vehicle, or uh, say for example, if it has, has a side crash, like somebody was taking a U-turn and some other vehicle has come and hit on the driver side, on the passenger side, on the B pillar area, on the door area, kind of thing. Or say for example, if there is a factor for roof crash also roof crash when it happens is that it is taking a roll say for example it is taking a roll when it hits somewhere it becomes unstable the vehicle unstable and it takes a somersault kind of thing <laughs> uh, the vehicle rolls over the road kind of thing then at that point of time the roof should not crash so that uh, if the roof crashes then the it, it will directly hit the head of the occupant correct right? and if it hits the head of the occupant then it becomes very fatal in cases like that and again, if you see the pedestrian protection, right? Pedestrian protection in the sense, like say, for example, if a person was walking on the zebra crossing or he was just jaywalking on the road and, and the vehicle that was approaching very fast and he didn't see and he hits the way and he hits the person. When you're hitting the person, it, the design of the hood should be in such a way that it does not prove to be fatal for the person that is being hit. So the hit might, the head might hit the roof or the, the hip might head, uh, the hip head and the leg might hit uh, the car. But in that case, the fracture should be taken into consideration. The head injury criteria should be taken into consideration of how it is being hit. So that the person is who is being hit does not, uh, what to say, becomes too fatal for him. There might be minor injuries here and there, yes, but it should not be fatal in this case. Now, the another thing into came into protection with the latest technology that is coming, EVs are getting very much, are catching up the market very fast, correct? Right? So since battery, if you look at the battery, it's just a, it, it, at a small quantum, right? It, it, it stores a huge amount of energy, correct? So if, if you see, right, there is a small short circuit also over there. It, it, there are tendencies that might catch fire, it might blast, right? We have seen small cell phones that have blasted while charging, correct, right? You say, for example, if you're having a cell phone and you try to twist it, right? When you're trying to sit on top of it, uh, some we have seen a lot of uh, cases from the market, like a person has kept the cell phone at his back pocket and he sat on top of it and it got bent. As soon as it got bent, the battery started fuming. Uh, the heat energy came into the picture it becomes a very dangerous so similarly all batteries are, uh, are acts as the same right so when you're having a uh, head-on collision or when you're having a side impact like it, it, the battery should not be crushed and uh, if, if it is crushed also it should not be in such a way that it becomes a short circuit or it becomes a bomb kind of thing it should not be explosive it should not be acting as an explosive correct so those information with an added EV technology that is coming into the picture, that becomes a very important factor right now. Rules are not yet very much stringent on it right now, but since the battery uh, EV market is catching up very fast, yes, the organizations are working for how to protect the battery from in terms of crash also. Right. So this is the overall body in white structure. So now the thing is that when you're doing all these things, for whom do you do it, right? So there are a lot of factors that comes into the picture, like there are organizations that comes in. These are all independent body organizations, right? When you're getting a star rating, right? Say for example, Euro and Cap. So basically test all the vehicles that are being sold in Europe. Asian and Cap is Asian, Southeast Asian Association uh, nations. So you get Thailand, Myanmar, India also comes into the picture. But India is a part of an Asian country, but they do not test their cars. They do not test our cars. There are a lot of political uh, and diplomatic reasons for that. And then we have National Highway of uh, Safety Traffic. So this is NHTSA, correct, right? So this is particularly for US. Then you have the Global NCAP. Global NCAP is basically based in UK, okay? So a Global NCAP is basically, it's an independent organization. You might have seen a lot of Global NCAP has been on the news because they have tested our vehicles for, uh, they have tested vehicles for Marutis, they have tested vehicles for Tatas and the Mahindras and the Hyundais, they have tested it. So you might have heard the name of the Global NCAP, it is based in UK. Latin NCAP is South American Association, it's an NCAP, New Car Assessment, NCAP, yes, NCAP stands for New Car Assessment Program. 
and insurance highway of uh, insurance institute of highway safety insurance institute of highway safety is a us based organization it is particularly it, it's an organization set up in collaboration with a lot of insurance companies say for example in, in in india right so if if you're riding a vehicle it may be a two wheeler or a four wheeler or any or any, any number of wheels that you are riding you need to support you, you are supposed to have an insurance correct right and this insurance can be from any company like xyz company like say for example you are going for reliance or you are going for liberty video con, uh, video con uh, there are a lot of companies that are available in the, uh, it may be aditya bella also correct right so all these informations are there so what do they do this companies insurance institute of highway safety there is a separate organizations um, developed by this insurance company 